Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today, my March Madness bracket is in shambles. I don't even know what I was thinking when I was making the bracket. And since that is now off my mind, I figured why not do something with physics to take my mind off it. So today, we're going to be talking about magnetic fields. Before we get started with magnetic fields, it's first important that we understand the right hand rule, but not the right hand rule I taught you with magnetic forces. If you remember, that was the physics gang sign method. Now we're gonna finally learn the curl finger method, and here's why. Let me first just draw a wire. Here's my little, you know, wire right here. And it's got some current going through it. Let's call it I. Now first, let me back up a second and ask you a question that you probably don't know the answer to, but you should. Where do electric fields come from how do you get them? Well, of course, electric fields come from charges, which then begs the question, where do magnetic fields come from? And the answer is current. So if you ever, ever have a current, that means you automatically have a magnetic field. And now you're thinking, Dan, does that mean we had magnetic fields when we were doing Ohm's law and DC circuits? The answer is yes, but it was so small that it didn't matter. So we could ignore it. Now we are not ignoring it, we are going to actually calculate it, and here's how we're going to do that. So first, let me look at my wire again. Actually, let me make it like a really big wire, okay? This is a really long wire. Again, some current going through it, we'll call it I. What you need to know is that if I wanna find the direction of the current around this wire, because it's, the magnetic field is all around this wire. If you wanna find the direction, it's simple. We use the right hand rule for current. I'll write that down right now right hand rule for magnetic fields, not forces. You're gonna notice there's quite a few right hand rules we're gonna be using in this class because there's three that I know of. There's the right hand rule for magnetic forces, there's the right hand rule for magnetic fields, and later we're gonna do the right hand rule for Faraday's and Lenz's law. So that'll be fun when we get there. But for right hand rule for magnetic fields, all you do is step one, your thumb points in the direction of your current and we'll do the example above but first let me just write the rule step two curl your fingers this is why it's called the curl finger method and the direction that your fingers are curling is literally the direction of the magnetic field and you're you're done you'll notice it's only two steps it's pretty straightforward the confusing part is where you actually apply it so let me scroll up back to this example looks like the current's pointing up so my thumb will point up and then I curl my fingers, and that's the direction of the magnetic field. Now imagine your thumb is the wire, okay? See how the way my fingers are curling, if I consider like the center, I would say it's going clockwise around my thumb. And if I were to draw this on this picture, I would say it's going around the wire like this. And then I'm not gonna draw it through the back because that's like behind it. So it's like a 3D representation that's going on here and it's going all along this wire just like this. The red lines are my magnetic field B. Now, this is a front view of the wire. Maybe it will also make sense to draw a top down view of what's going on here. For that, I would just have a wire with the current going out of the page. And the reason why, if you view this from the top, it's like your thumb is pointing back at you, your thumb pointing at you is out of the page, and like I said, curl your fingers, it's still counterclockwise, so it's gonna look like that. So maybe that makes more sense, I don't know. Now let me just draw this one more time because there's one more point that I want to make with this wire, with the current going up, and that is, if I wanna look at some point over here, let's call it point P, and on the right side we'll choose another point, I'll call it point Q. If I want to find the direction of the magnetic field at point P and point Q, and I consider the fact that it's going around like this, the magnetic field's going around like that, well, I would say at point P, the magnetic field does not point left. It actually, if I think of my fingers, my fingers on the left side of my thumb are coming back at me. My fingers are coming back at me. That means at point P, the magnetic field is out of the page all along the left side. So in other words, the closer you get to it, I'll just tell you it's stronger, so I'll draw bigger circles still out of the page. As you get further and further away, you know, it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Still out of the page everywhere, though. 
And then on the other side, as you can imagine, it's probably into the page. But the reason why is because if I position my thumb in the middle as my wire, and I look at my fingers to the right of my thumb, it looks like my fingers are curling into the page at that point. Looks like my fingers are going into the page. So I would draw the symbol for into the page, which is the circle with the X through it all along my wire. And of course, as you get closer, those circles will get bigger because it's stronger. And as you get further away, they're, they're very small, you know. So that's what it is for magnetic field in a wire. By the way, your professor is not expecting you to draw the, the circles with varying sizes from bigger to smaller. It's fine if you just put one size. I'm just showing you right now so you can visualize it because it is stronger closer to the wire. Okay, now that we know the direction, we can now talk about the strength of the magnetic field, which has the equation B equals mu naught I over 2 pi R. This is just one of those equations you memorize. You can derive it using Ampere's law. Maybe I'll explain that in a separate video. But what's most important to realize here is that this is the equation for a current in a wire only. There's quite a few scenarios where you'll have to calculate the magnetic field. This is specifically for the current in a wire. I also want to specify for a straight wire. It has to be a straight wire, not curved or bent at all. And so now let's look at a quick example problem. Let's say for a wire that looks like this, it's essentially infinitely long, the length doesn't matter. It's got a current of, let's say, 5 amps going to the right. I want to find the magnetic field at point A here, and let's say that distance away from the wire is 3 millimeters. What is the magnetic field and the direction? Well, that's pretty simple, because all we would say is B equals mu naught I over 2 pi R. Mu naught is a constant. It's 1.26 times 10 to the minus 6th. You can also say 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th. That's the same number. So I'll use the number 1.26 times 10 to the minus 6 times the current, which is 5 amps, divided by 2 pi r. Now, r is not a radius. I mean, it kind of is, but it's really just the distance away from your current. In this case, it's 3 millimeters. Of course, you need to convert that to meters, divide by 1,000. 0 0.003 meters, that's what goes in the denominator right there. And if I just plug this in my calculator, I get a number, and I'll get 3.34 times 10 to the minus fourth. And the units for the magnetic field are the Tesla, named after Nikola Tesla, and not the car company. And that's our answer for this one. Now, we still need to figure out the direction. If I want to figure out the direction at point A, I take my thumb, I point it to the right, I think of my wire as my thumb, which means I'm looking at my fingers above the wire. So above the wire, it looks like my fingers are curling back towards me. I would say the direction at point A, out of the page, because my fingers are curling back towards me. So out of the page at point A. And yes, that means if I looked at some point below the wire, it would point into the page. And that's pretty much it for a very basic introduction to magnetic fields. Join me in the next video where we talk about finding the force between wires and we're gonna solve that using the equation we just solved for with magnetic fields. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.